Everything's being recorded. Yay! Oh, wait. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on a crossover between Oran High School Host Club and Cute High Earth Defense Club Love. It's just us playing around because it sounds like a great idea. What if you mix these two shows together? And welcome to this first, maybe only, edition of Crossover, where we play around with what would happen if you mix these two things together. Today's subjects, Oran High School Host Club and Cute High Earth Defense Club Love. <laughs> it sounded like one of those talk shows way back when. <laughs> that was the point. <laughs> Uh, if you just think about it, these shows would mesh so well together. It's just crazy. Though I think the numbers don't quite add up. You know, the, the fact that, you know, you only have, let's see, we have Haruhi, King, Shadow King, the Twins, Mori, and Honey. Is that too many or less than? Oran has more. But the number of villains is correct because there are three members of Lobelia. Mm -hmm. And there are three members of Carl Adamus, which I cannot pronounce for the life of me. Yeah, and then we have Ringe, who would work really well pairing up with the the producers. Um, I would say I would say the press club, but we also have a press club to pair up with the press club. Yeah, but I just see all of them getting together on that set going, "Oh, we must film this because it would be so awesome." Especially that episode with Ringe, which was first introduced, and she wanted to do that film thing with everyone. <laughs> Just in my head, she so works well to work with the animal producers <laughs> to do another reality TV show where we now introduce the Oran High School Club <laughs> into the mix. Just, oi. <laughs> that, and if you put Honey and Scarlet together, I don't think there would be any living Odakus left because of all the hard attacks introduced from cuteness. Yes, because if you put Scarlet hugging Wombat and Honey hugging Bun Bun, the two of them next to each other, because they're both, you know, slightly short blondes that do the whole kawaii thing way too well. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's my plan drawing. <laughs> You're going to scare them off. <laughs> like we haven't already. Look at those subscriber numbers. I know, they keep dropping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, do you have any specific points? The the structure works well for both because they're both high school clubs. They both have activities that wouldn't necessarily be approved by uh, the school boards. The main difference being that the Oran host club is wildly popular and the Earth Defense Club is a thorn in the side of most of the school. <laughs> well, specifically the student council, which also happens to be the arch rivals, but hey, details. Well, they get into plenty of altercations with other students. Let's not forget the guy with the face of a 50-year-old who doesn't like their, you know, gossiping ways, and the young manager student with the glasses who gets pushed out of his place by Yamoto's insane personality change. <laughs> And, oh, let's see, the ridiculous dance instructor who everyone likes the Earth Defense Club better than they like him. <laughs> you know, I don't think most of those things were the Earth Defense Club's fault. <laughs> I didn't say they were at fault, I just said that they were bothering other school members. I just can imagine the hijinks. <laughs> Especially if the king got a hold of those powers, and I just see Shadow King going, my Budget. <laughs> Shadow King would be too busy talking with Eo trying to figure out how to make money out of this whole thing. <laughs> While Vesta would be teamed up with the twins to go conquer more girls. <laughs> and Mori and Cerulean would just be sitting there quietly since neither of them speak much. And Wombat would be exclaiming over all the love depicted in the Oran host club room with all these girls and the their looks and the sighs of happiness and these attentive boys making sure these girls are happy <laughs> yeah i can actually just see eo and shadow king going off to negotiate a contract with 
the producers, because you're using the host club's likeness in your show. We have rights to that. We sell pictures, you know. <laughs> yes, and Haruhi just looking on at all of it and assuming that the Earth Defense Club members are rich and just going, rich bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, get some fancy tuna. Order expensive sushi. Damn it, rich bastards. <laughs> Commoner coffee demonstration. <laughs> Buy a commoner. <laughs> uh, just all the wonderful stuff that could happen, especially if... I'm thinking it would be funner if we had the Earth Defense people end up in the Oran universe. <laughs> especially if everything ended up on their campus. Well, yes. <laughs> because it's always more fun if the people with superpowers go somewhere where people with superpowers are even less common. <laughs> And you're just right, just suddenly see Wombat just running around the host club going, All oh, this love, love, love! Yes, and I see Haruhi being the only member of the host club that can still tell who all the members are with the blur on. <laughs> kind of like how she was one of the few people who could tell the twins apart? Yes, is I love the twins, but I couldn't really tell Karu and Hikaru apart. The sad thing was I didn't bother to try. I'm like, wow, that's shallow. <laughs> uh, also, we're looking through the lens of anime, so if we're actually in that world, there's probably more differences that we could pick up. True, but I didn't even think to try. And can you just imagine the Aura and Host Club getting those powers? <laughs> and Haruhi just being, I've had enough. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think Haruhi would actually, oh, maybe she would get powers, but I could just see everyone else, which I think is how this idea started, was we were trying to match up host club members with defense club members and going, who would cosplay as who? Mm-hmm. I also suddenly got this funny image of the fact that Haruhiao, the entire host club, is the only one wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> it would drive Tamaki nuts because he's always trying to, Haruhi, dress in a dress! <laughs> You've got to dress like a girl! I recently saw the poor fish and Hachar going, what have we got ourselves into? <laughs> uh, especially if they got the Liberia group and changed them into the arch enemies. <laughs> Hari, come with us, we have the better powers! <laughs> uh, I still can't help but think of, call us sisters! I know, and them chasing her around as she's laughing. This was pretty much just an excuse for us to talk about both of these great shows at once. Pretty much, but with most of the host club members being ridiculously rich, the power they could bring to bear against the arch rivals, because the press club threw money at the Earth Defense Club to get all that cosplay stuff going. Imagine how much money the high school host club could throw at problems. Not to mention, the Shadow King has his own private army. <laughs> well, yeah. So I don't think any of them would get around to using the powers very much. <laughs> oh, Shadow King would probably use them if he could figure out how to save money. Yes, and Tamaki would probably use them just because he would fall into a role, just like how Renge got him to do that whole aloof, dispirited king thing. <laughs> he could very easily be talked into playing the hero. <laughs> It's not that hard, especially if someone says, Yes, your job is to protect Haruhi. Act as the knight in shining armor. Yes, and then they can't get Tamaki to de-transform ever. <laughs> and Haruhi, of course, be like, I'm having none of this. I can protect myself, especially now that I have these neat powers. I'm, sorry, I'm trying to figure out how Haruhi's father would react to all this. Relatively calmly, I think, as long as it didn't interfere with her studies or involve her actually kissing anyone. I think he'd be okay with her kissing the bracelet. <laughs> oh, it would be funny if Haruhi was the only one who somehow resisted having to say her cue lines. Because remember at the beginning of Earth Defense Club? Yeah, that everyone got forced into saying those lines. Live for love, die for love, love is all. Nothing comes from loveless power. And I see her, he's still managing to keep her, her signature tagline of, Rich Bastards. <laughs> that would be funny if that's her transformation line. Rich Bastards kiss! <laughs> no, you, you say your line afterwards. You say love making first. Everyone says love making before they kiss the bracelet. And then <laughs> their tagline is at the end, so she'd finish it with Rich Bastards. <laughs> you shall all pay, you Rich Bastards. <laughs> that has nothing to do with love! Well, that's another thing that would drive Wombat nuts, is the fact that Haruhi, she has no attraction to really anyone. She does start to kind of like Tamaki, but 
so there's not really that much love going on with her. <laughs> Even though she's surrounded by lots of pretty boys. Which also reminds me of the fact that I just see the Earth Defense Club going, Are you sure this is a girl? Because she's kind of hot. <laughs> 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 she definitely looks like a boy to us. <laughs> yeah, in case fans can't tell at this point, we're specifically using the anime. I know that the manga has some post-series chapters where uh, Tamaki and Haruhi are um, a bit closer. <laughs> Uh, so, shall we wrap things up? Yes. This would definitely be an interesting idea, especially with Cute High just finishing up. If the people who did Oran and Cute High got together, I think they could have a lot of creative ideas. That would make a really fun show, especially since the characters match up so well, and the story arcs, and just everything is really nice and would work really well together. Oh, that could probably be said for almost any pairing of two high school series because a lot of them have things in common. This matchup has the advantage of both sets of main characters belonging to a school club, where not all the members are totally excited about being in the club, <laughs> and the club has interesting uh, extracurricular activities. <laughs> and they're both filled to the brim with pretty boys. Quite. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on a crossover between Oren High School Host Club and Cute High Earth Defense Club Love. Hey, I did it. I did it. Yes. <laughs> yes, I know. And this is the conclusion of Crossover. Oren High School Host Club mixed with Cute High Earth Defense Club Love. Thanks for listening. If you like Lux's art, you can find him on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Want to keep up to date with what we're doing with these podcasts? You can follow us on Tumblr. Really like this podcast? Leave a friendly comment below. Also, this is YouTube, so please subscribe. Really, really like Lux's art and would like some of your own? He's currently open for commissions. All links in the description. What if... God. Damn it. Oran <laughs> High School Host Club and Cute High Earth Defense Club had yeah. a crossover. Oh my god, I did that! <laughs> did what? Messed up? We knew that was going to happen. No, I mean, after I first messed up, I didn't mess up. Yay! I made it through. No, you didn't. You left off the word love at the end. Cute High Earth Defense Club. I curse when I said love. Son of a b do that again! <laughs> Hey, no cursing. <laughs> okay, our thoughts on a crossover between Oran High School Host Club and Cute High Earth Defense Club Love. See? See? I can do it! <laughs>